Again, welcome you to the 2022 <laughs> International Prophetic Summit, and I'm Perry Stone, and I want to say stay tuned because you're about to see and hear something amazing. I'm going to be preaching a message that's very timely called The Coming Apocalyptic Food Shortages. And I'm going to read to you, this is my book, The Vision. Some, many of you have this, but I'm going to read chapter 11. S several months prior to my father's death, I spent some time with him at home. He was sitting in a recliner and invited me to sit next to him on the couch. He had something important to tell me. He looked troubled and he said, I saw something very strange last night. I saw what was some, uh, somewhat of a dream vision. I was standing outside looking at the front yard and I saw three sets of knives, forks, and spoons. However, one set was buried in the ground, only two sets were above ground. Uh, he asked me what I thought the scene represented. I responded that the utensils are used when a person eats a meal and the average American will eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Something is buried underground when it dies. I believe the scene is revealing that a third of either the world or America's food supply will be gone soon and diminished. And he said, your interpretation is completely correct. Now, there have been about a total of, now we're talking about recorded famines in the world, about 146 famines in the world. Some of them in the Bible lasted seven years in length. Two of them did. And you have to understand that when these famines take place, what does it affect the most? It affects either the water supply and also the food supply. In the 1800s, from, actually from the year 1860 to the year 2020, an estimated 128 million people have died in the past 160 years because of famines uh, that were a result of the destruction or the lack of ability to grow food. Destruction by flood and by locust and by drought uh, are very serious and people don't think about locusts, but just a while back, 170,000 acres were destroyed by swarms of locusts just in Africa alone. In the future, the Bible tells us that the Euphrates River is actually going to go completely dry. And as a result of that, you will have several nations, at least three, that depend on the Euphrates for food that's going to impact that entire part of the Middle East. However, the main verse I want to look at is in the book of Revelation. Uh, and I want to uh, read this verse to you now, and, and it uh, should come up on the screen for you there. This is the scene of John seeing into heaven as the tribulation begins. And in this verse, he says, when he opened the third seal, you know, that's the seven sealed book. I heard the third living creature say, come up and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and he had a, uh, that sat on, it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And Denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Now, I will get into that a little bit later on what that means and represents. But the point I want to make is this. We're going to deal with in this message, number one, the prophecies of coming food shortages. Number two, there's a predicament that begins to occur uh, with shortages and supply chain issues when this takes place. And number three, the preparations that people can make as a result of what we know in the Bible. Now, basically, these predictions are divided up into four areas before the tribulation and then we read about the uh, beginning of the tribulation the very early part then the middle of the tribulation and we see something happening at the end of the tribulation and so if we divide these up in this level Matthew 24 verse 7 there will be famines in diverse places Matthew 24 7 is before the tribulation begins in verse 15 so before the tribulation in areas of the world there'll be famines now when we begin to look at uh, the the COVID disruptions in transportation, we understand that it doesn't have to be a famine by a drought. It can be a famine caused by shortages of delivery systems being able to bring the product to you. Never thought I'd see the day people running, having to run on toilet paper in a store. Do you understand that? And, but, it, but it did, and because of the possibility of disruptions. Number two is the beginning of the tribulation. Now we see, according to the text, that there will be food rationing very early in the first part of the tribulation period. And we'll talk about the wheat and the barley and what a denarius 
denarius is, it's a Roman coin. We actually have these in our collection. It's a, it's a coin back in John's day that was equal to one day's salary for an entire days of work. When you get from Revelation chapter 6 and you start coming into Revelation 13, uh, 17, uh, actually uh, 13, uh, 17 through 18, you discover that no man might buy or sell, and this would include food, except he have the name of the beast, the mark of the beast, or the number of his name. So as you get further into the seven-year period of the tribulation period, one of the things you really start paying attention to if you study the scriptures in detail is the lack of food that's going to be on the entire planet throughout the entire earth. And then when you come into the end of the tribulation, you have another thing taking place where a third of the sea and a third of the fresh water that's used for drinking and would also be used for irrigation is completely affected by a volcanic eruption and also by an asteroid which strikes the earth. And one third of the entire population is completely annihilated, likely from poisonous water and a lack of food. Now, you say, boy, that's real negative. Well, we'll be at a marriage supper of the lamb having a good time during some of this. So, uh, I wouldn't, uh, but we are, what we're preparing you for is the pre part, the pre, what comes up to the pre part. That's what for you and for you that are watching that aren't saved, you really need to pay attention because <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Now, there are, there are so many causes of food shortages that I want to give you this because if you don't think about it and put it together, you don't realize how many possibilities there are for an entire nation's food supply to be affected. In the time of Abraham in Genesis 12 and 1, there was a famine in the land. Isaac's day, Genesis 26 and 1, and there was a famine in the land. Joseph's day, Genesis chapter 41, a seven-year famine that struck the area of Egypt and impacted the entire world. And then when you get to reading in the times of Elijah and Elisha, there was a three and a half year famine and later a seven year famine. So this is something, uh, and, and by the way, back then it was not climate change. The, okay. No, these type of things have been happening in world history. So it's nothing new. Okay. Just, I just, I don't know why I threw that out there. I thought it'd be interesting to tell you that. But, uh, in the time of Elijah, it got so bad that they were eating doves dung and the heads of donkeys. A woman in 2 Kings 6 and 29 actually boiled her child and ate it and got mad at another woman who would not boil her infant and eat it. Now imagine how severe it was. And you know, I'm gonna say this to you. People that are used to food when they don't have food will do things that you can't even imagine breaking in people's homes, stealing things from stores and things of that nature. So we also, you know, again, go through the Bible and the apocalyptic scriptures. It's very clear. There's going to be some very severe famines. Now here's what Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 says. And this is our third scripture we're using. Then the sixth angel poured out his, uh, his bowl into the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And it's going to be so dry along the 1800 mile Euphrates River that armies are going to be able to march into the dried riverbed. No mud at all. This is like a serious drought. And the reason we know there's going to be a drought is when the two witnesses appear in the first part of the tribulation, the first 42 months, what do they do? They have power to make it not rain for three and a half years. Now, there, we, we have pictures of the Euphrates River. When you look at the Euphrates River. The Euphrates River is an irrigation river. It irrigates the, the farmland of Turkey and also Syria and also the country of Iraq. Now, if it dries up, there is a serious problem for millions and tens of millions of people in that part of the world. And this is a little report that came out recently. Turkey has built a number of dams that can shut off the Euphrates River. But this is not going to be Turkey shutting off the water necessarily. This is a supernatural event represented by the judgment of the Lord in the future. And when you look at this, the Euphrates River has been drying up for two decades. We have friends from that part of the world and military men that sh have shared with me that the Euphrates over the past several de decades has dropped substantially. And one of the things is this, this is a prediction made by researchers by the year 20. 40. Now think about that. That sounds like it's a far, far, far off. But by 2040, they predict the Euphrates River not only will be dried, but all the rivers of that part of the world are going to completely dry up because of the famines that have been taking place. So there is the drying up of rivers. Number two is 
uh, what I call wars in food nations. Now, wars not only displace people, as you, as you are seeing with the war of Russia and the Ukraine, but wars also affect uh, the, not only the refugees, see, when refugees pour into another country, what do you have to do? You have to feed them. Food has to come. You know, you have one or two million people coming in. You've got to have food supplies. And so war displaces people. War destroys bridges. War destroys roads. And Russia has blocked off the Black Sea to prevent the Ukraine from bringing food products out to sell or anything in. So when there's a naval blockade, it presents a whole other problem. Now, if you want to know about the situation in the Ukraine, this is amazing. It's very sad. 7.1 million people have now been displaced in the Ukraine because of the war that is taking place there. And that was a statistic from May of 2022. Listen to this. The entire state of Tennessee has 6.8 million people. If you take the entire population of Nashville, Knoxville, uh, Memphis, and you take all of our people and put them together, more people have been displaced in the Ukraine from one war than the entire state of Tennessee. And this gives you an idea of what can happen. I'm going to show you uh, some things in later teachings and some things later on to help you better understand this. So war displaces. Number two is volcanic eruptions. A volcanic eruption can take place and affect the land and the food supply. And this is, again, something that we don't, we don't really think of till you research it. The ash from an eruption that falls to the ground, it layers the ground, it is carried by the wind, it buries the, the topsoil and also the leaves on the ground, etc. Now, anytime there's a volcanic eruption, the ash will impact farming substantially because when rain mixes with the volcanic gases, it produces something called acid rain. And this has happened when Mount St. Helens erupted in the United States years ago. Uh, it impacts the agriculture, the planting. It falls on the leaves of the trees where it affects the leaves of the trees. Anything that grows green that is a plant life, a volcanic eruption, if the, if the acid, I'm sorry, if the uh, ash falls in that area will absolutely affect it. In eruptions from the, from the 13th century to the 19th century, it impacted food, creating entire famines in nations. And uh, let me give you an example of a couple that took place. In the year 536 AD, uh, there was an eruption of a volcano that for 18 months, this is historical records, the sun would not shine. It was like a fog was covering the sun and many thousands of people died. In 1815 in Indonesia, there is a mountain called Mount Tambora and it erupted and it is called the deadliest volcanic eruption in, world, in, 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 in the history of the world, of the known world. It caused years of famines. And so from the eruptions from the 13th to the 19th century uh, has affected the food supply for millions and millions of people. And that many eruptions have caused death because the farming was interrupted. So you have wars, you have volcanic eruptions, and then you have the depletion of the water supply. Now, this one is very interesting for the Midwestern part of the United States. And if you're from that area, you're familiar with this. In 2021, uh, the West experienced one of the worst droughts in history, the, 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 the Midwest, and it affected the West. There were seven states that tap into the drinking water or the water supply, let me say, of the Colorado River. The Colorado River is fed by the mountains where it snows. And it blew, I, I was in Colorado in May and it was snowing one year. So it snows and then melts and it, feel, it, it replenishes the water. There is a lake called Lake Mead that you've probably heard about that is dropping so low and drying up, they're finding bodies in barrels. I wonder who did that. Las Vegas, uh, anyway, we won't go there. Uh, but there's bodies in barrels. One at least has been found. Barrels have been found. Boats that were sunk, are, and you can walk on totally dry land. It's parched. And they're saying it's possible that if, if without some kind of divine intervention or supernatural rain or a lot of, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen, that it's a very, very uh, big possibility that Lake Mead will drop 34 feet in the next two years. And it's, it's going to impact seven states 
in their drinking water. They're not even sure what they're going to do. They're actually in, in an emergency session talking about this uh, the past couple of weeks. In Atlanta, Georgia, in the year 2008 to 2009, the docks around one of the largest lakes, Lake Lanier down there, uh, it, the, the water had dropped so low that the boats were sitting on dry dock, they call it. It was sitting on in, in the mud. And I remember Joe Edwards, a friend of mine, uh, shared with me, I said, Joe, how bad is it? He said, well, I know the mayor, of our city and when we have heard him in discussion saying that if this continues for several more months we will have to find a way to move millions of people out of Atlanta Georgia and relocate them that's how close we were and you know somebody got the bright idea to go to the courthouse step and raise their hands with a group of people and ask God to have mercy and rain and guess what it started raining that day a true story so, so you know there are some answers. You know, one of the things, let me go back and talk about this, that the Yellowstone National Park, and by the way, they had a flood there in Yellowstone that, sh that just tore roads up, that shut the park down in one section of it, at least, you, no excess in and out. Houses were falling. It was the most incredible thing you've ever seen. But it has also affected the super volcano. The, let me just say, that park is a one massive super volcano. And they say, oh, maybe 50,000 years from now, 500,000, you know, maybe it'll blow up. But other people who are familiar with that said, if there's ever a huge earthquake or something underneath happening there and that blows up, it will take out the wind, the jet stream would, would flow into the breadbasket of, of America and it would take out the breadbasket uh, of the United States uh, just with the volcanic ash that we mentioned a moment ago. Now, the depletion of the water supply. Here's the fourth way that there will be in the future apocalyptic type, type of uh, food shortages. And that is uh, floods that are flooding the farmland. Again, this is something we don't think about, but in, in 2021, in July 12th through the 25th, there were 12 nations in Europe. Now, when I saw these pictures, I said, this can't even be real, but they were people taking their phones out and putting them on YouTube, etc. And there was flooding in the nations of Europe that cost $10 billion just in damage. Floods remove the topsoil and you have to have topsoil to effectively grow the vegetables and things that you need. And it's, this happens especially in land where there's uh, rivers and the rivers begin to flood if there's farm, and that happens here in the States as well. Uh, it destroyed early crops and there were entire nations that didn't even have food supplies in their nations that they could produce because of the destruction in those sections of the nations where the floods came. One element that few people think about, now you hang on with me here because this is getting serious in America, is the fertilizer necessary for farms. All right, a fer what is fertilizer? Well, in my day, it was something that came from a cow. Where's my, where's my mountain people? I gotta have some mountain people here. All right, but they make fertilizer today in factories and it, a fertilizer contains nitrogen, it contains phosphorus, it contains potassium, and it's used to, re, to actually replenish the essential nutrients that are needed for there to be effective growth on a farm of the plants and the food supply. The U.S. The US alone uses 21 million tons of fertilizer a year. Eur Europe uses 26% of all the fertilizer produced by factories and, comp and, 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 and places that produce it. And so what is happening is when the fertilizer, there's a shortage of it and you cannot grow the food, it brings the prices up an average of 30% more in a grocery store because of the other options they have to do or because of shortages and the high cost of the fertilizer. Now, here's the thing that you need to understand. Russia, the Russian nation, is a real heavy producer of the fertilizer needed for farms. For example, it produces 50 million tons a year. Now the US uses 21 million tons on our farms. So think about that, over double of what we use, Russia produces. They produce 13% of the world's fertilizer. Now what you have now is sanctions on Russia where people are not supposed to purchase their fertilizer and you've got the blockage of the Black Sea. Now why is that significant? Because if you understand about uh, the fertilizing process and, and, and the, the nations that do it, you also have a situation with the Ukraine 
And these two countries at war are creating a situation and it's, it's kind of a, you know, the down, the downline of what happens at the top with a huge fertilizer, uh, fertilizer shortage. Now, listen to what I'm going to say, because this ties into the growth of food. For example, to effectively grow wheat and barley and some of the, what we call the nece necessary grains that the world has to have to live, you have to have the proper fertilizer. Ukraine supplies 10% of the world's wheat and cannot harvest it because of the war and the roads and trying to get it out. You see what I'm saying? That's 10%. That's, that's 10%. Russia supplies the world with 17% of the global wheat. When you add Ukraine and Russia together, that's 25% of the world's supply of wheat. Now, here's what's interesting. In the Bible, if, if we look at 25, 50, 75, 100, 25 is a fourth, right? 50 is a half, 75 is three quarters, and then you have the full. Did you know that the Bible predicts a famine of one fourth of the world? Did you hear what I just said? And see, this, this type of things, the sunflower order, there's a sunflower oil shortage that, you, that is used to make bread all over Europe and the Middle East. The cost of that has gone up 50%. It's now being sold on the black market in Egypt, Syria, and Lebanon. And you must understand, when we have snow here, what does everybody go get? Bread and milk. I couldn't figure out why bread and milk. Well, they dip their bread in the milk and eat it, you know? I mean, but, uh, but when you understand the Middle East, pita bread and bread, in most of the world, it's probably the same with India. Bread is the number one staple that all poor nations and nations in Europe and the Middle East have to have. It has totally been decimated in some areas because of the wars that are taking place. But what we're about to do now, and I want you to pay attention, is I'm going to get into heavy, heavy apocalyptic scriptures. And we're going to show you not only what's about to happen, we're going to show you what you can do on a family level and a one-on-one -on -one level to make it through these type of things before there ever is a tribulation that occurs. Somebody take a praise break and give the Lord a hand. Come on, somebody. Praise Him right now and thank you. Never has a gathering of five of America's preeminent prophetic voices been more timely than at the 2022 International Prophetic Summit. The 12 new unedited messages are now available to the Manifest TV audience. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn presented an Urgent Harbinger Update. Bill Cloud gave major warnings with his messages facing today's giants. The Tale of Two Ships, America's Warning, and the message, The Ordeal of Jealousy, The Trial of Bitter Waters, as always, Mark Biltz amazed the attendees with his insightful prophetic teachings. Are we to know the times and seasons? And better not press the snooze button. Rabbi Kurt Landry shared a powerful revelation on the Cyrus key of overcoming today's cancel culture. Perry preached five new messages, including the coming apocalyptic food shortages, seven years in heaven, three things that I fear, and how to escape the coming great tribulation. Also, thousands have requested that Perry explain the War of Gog and Magog, which he did in his detailed teaching, The Four Ezekiel Prophecies About to Happen. He concluded the conference with a revelation on end-time spiritual warfare entitled, I Saw Satan's Coming Assaults, The War Room of Darkness. To receive the 12 audio CD album, request offer number 22PS-CD and include a gift of $55 or more. The 12 DVD album includes scriptures and PowerPoint presentations from the teachings and is available for a donation of $95 or more. Just ask for offer number 22PS-DVD. The messages are also available digitally on demand at perrystone.tv. We are in a battle for freedom to release prophetic truth and these messages are 12 eye-opening revelations with new insight that the adversary would prefer you never hear. Order today by calling toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323 or at perrystone.org. If you prefer, you may send a check with the offer number to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. These teachings will inform you, reveal what is coming soon, and help equip you to prepare for the upcoming big events. For those of you that watch the Manifest telecast, I cannot overemphasize the significance of the 
word of the Lord that came from all of our speakers. It almost got to the point of being mind-blowing. And if you attend this meeting, it's, it's an overload of revelation, not just information, but revelation. So let me encourage you to get these CDs or DVDs. Now, this, the DVDs do have the PowerPoint pictures that we use. You may, you may prefer to get those, but either way, and this is the unedited version. Uh, you only see an, an excerpt on television. Like uh, my message, there's another uh, 45 to 50 minutes of it. And you don't get into the meat of it till the second half. And I hate that, but it's just true. Please get those. And uh, it's going to be a blessing to you. We are, we're really in prophetic times. And I think all of you that follow our ministry especially are aware of that. Uh, speaking of following the ministry, I hope that some of you will join me. I have my papers here that tell me where I'm going to be going to. September 22nd, Winchester, Kentucky at the Ark of Mercy Church of God with Janice Claypool. If you're from that area, drive in for that one. I'm only there one service only, September 22nd. And then the main event, of course, many of you are registered for that. We can't wait to see you. I'm going to have a great time there. And then uh, we that, that'll start October the 4th and go for five days. Abundant Life Christian Center, Pastor Walter Hallam's Church in Lamarck, Texas, October 28th, 29th, and 30th. That's a Friday, two services Saturday, and of course, all day Sunday. We've not been there in several years. Now, folks, you always say, come down to Houston, come down to our area. It's time for you to come and see us. And this is your opportunity. And then before we go to Israel, we're going to conclude our year in uh, Springfield, Missouri. I have never preached in Springfield, Missouri in 46 years. It's the uh, headquarters for the Assemblies of God. And we're going to be at King's Springfield, a wonderful church there, uh, Dr. Janelle Morocco. And we're going to come on the 11th, 12th, and 13th. And I'm going to ask all of you that have watched us or heard us over the years that have never been in a service to get to that church for those services because we want to see you and get to meet you. Uh, uh, and it's going to be a great time in the Lord. That's, again, November 11th, 12th, and 13th, Springfield, Missouri, King's uh, Church there in Springfield. Our, the information, of course, will be on our website at perrystone.org. And also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have 730, almost 740,000 people that keep up with us on YouTube. And we appreciate all the stations we're on, the many Christian stations throughout the world, throughout satellite. Uh, we know that you support them. We ask you to continue to do that because the messages have got to get out. The messages that the Lord is giving us both on our YouTube channel, also on the Christian networks, which is the Manifest Telecast. The Manifest Telecast is on these main networks and satellite around the world. So uh, keep praying for us. Join us on Tuesday nights at Omega Center International Thursday night for World Prayer. And I'll be uh, talking to you next week. Don't forget to get your product. Join Perry and Pam Stone October 4th through 8th as they host the 35th annual Main Event Camp Meeting Celebration at Omega Center International in Cleveland, Tennessee. This year's celebration features anointed worship from Karen Peck and New River, the Neelands, and Lyndall Cooley with powerful preaching from Perry Stone. Tony Scott, Tommy Bates, and Ron Carpenter. The celebration continues on the Omega Ranch with loads of fun for everyone at Pam's Fall Festival. This is a free event, but you must register online. Go to perrystone.org for registration and more information. Be refreshed, renewed, and recharged at the 2022 Main Event Camp Meeting Celebration. Register now.